When working with nodes, you might have noticed that their sockets come in different colors and shapes. Also, the connecting lines can be solid or dashed. And they can have solid or gradient colors. All of this provides practical information that makes using nodes easier and more intuitive. So stick around because we're gonna explain all of it and then some. I'm Jude Blender, let's jump right in. Let's talk about the colors first. Each one is associated with a specific type of data. For example, numbers, meshes, strings, materials, and more. And you can only connect data types that are compatible with each other. Otherwise, the connection won't work, which will be indicated by a red line. There are 13 types of data that are handled by the different nodes. Shader, geometry, boolean, color, float, integer, string, vector, collection, object, material, texture, and image. I'll leave this for the entire video as reference. When you connect two sockets, the line will match the color of the data type. And if any of the nodes is selected, the lines will become brighter, almost white, but with the same hue. If you connect two incompatible data types, such as geometry and vector, the line will become red, which tells you that Blender will not try to convert between data types and that connection will be ignored. If you connect two different but compatible data types, such as color and vector, the connecting line will transition between both colors. This means that both types are compatible and that Blender can do any conversion between them if necessary for the operation to happen. In this example, a color is nothing more than a group of three numbers that represent the red, green and blue components of that color. A vector is also a group of three numbers, so this connection will just take the RGB components of the color and will use them as the X, Y, Z dimensions of this vector. And if I change the color components, sure enough, the object moves. Note that the dimensions axes are precisely of the red, green and blue colors. Coincidence? <laughs> All number types are compatible with each other float, integer, and even vectors and booleans, and Blender will do the appropriate conversions. So for example, connecting a float to an integer will remove the fractional part, and connecting a float to a boolean will result in false if the float is zero or less, and true otherwise. Connecting a vector to an integer socket will result in the average of all of the three numbers that make up the vector, and then removing the decimals. Connecting an integer to a vector socket will result in a vector with all dimensions having the value of the integer. So in general, wherever it makes sense to connect two different data types, Blender will do the appropriate conversion for you. However, there are data types that are not compatible between each other. For example, you cannot connect any number type to a string. Blender will not automatically do the conversion for you, so in this case you would need to add a value to string node first. Same thing when trying to connect a color to a geometry. It really doesn't make any sense as these two data types contain completely different different information, so Blender doesn't accept it. One last thing about colors, they are somewhat consistent in different places within Blender. For example, if you go to the outliner, you'll see that the object's icons have a similar orange color than the object socket. Also, here in the properties, the object tab's icon is also of a similar color. Note that they are not the exact same color, but they're quite similar. Same thing with the material icon and socket, and also with collections. Even the icon of the geometry of a mesh is of the same color as the socket, although the camera and lights are also of the same color, so it's unclear if all of this is intended or a very convenient coincidence. Now let's talk about the shapes of the sockets. They can have any of four shapes, circles, capsules, diamonds, or diamonds with a dot. Capsules are the easiest, it just means that you can connect any number of inputs to it. Very useful when joining geometries or strings. Now to explain the diamond connectors, in Blender there's a concept known as field, essentially a field is a function that is calculated for each individual element within a context. For example, vertices in a mesh. If you want to perform an operation that affects each individual vertex, then you need to use a field. Here's a very simple example. We have a transform geometry and a set position node. The vector sockets in the transform geometry node are all circle shaped. This means that they only accept hard data. In this case, as indicated by the color, it's a specific vector, not a field. In fact, if I try to connect a field, the line will be red indicating an error. So since these are hard numbers, they affect the whole geometry, not specific vertices, so any change I make here will affect the whole thing. However, the set position node takes fields, as you can tell by the diamond shapes. Diamonds with dots mean that the socket can take a field, but it currently has a hard value, which in this example is this 0, 0, 0 vector. Selection has a diamond shape with a dot, so I could connect a field, but it currently has the default value of true, which means that that every vertex is being selected. But I could connect a field that affects individual vertices. For example, if I connect a material selection node, now the dot within the diamond has disappeared.
disappeared, indicating that the socket is now receiving a field, not a hard value. I can select a material here, and now this node will affect only the specific vertices of that material, not the whole geometry. The position socket is a blue diamond, so now you can tell that it's a vector field. Even if we didn't know what the node does, we could deduct that it provides the position of each of the vertices. So what do you think would happen if I were to connect the position to the offset? For each individual vertex, it would offset its position by a magnitude and direction equal to its current position, basically multiplying each vertex's position vector by 2, making the shape larger. But let's say that now we want to offset each vertex by a unique number. We could use their indexes. Since there are over 500 vertices in this shape, it's offsetting the points way too much. We cannot even see where they are. So I'm going to add a math node set to divide. Note that this node can also take and output fields, which is great because our index field will pass through the math node. And you can see that it's outputting a field because of the dashed line. If I cut this connection, now the inputs and outputs of this node have a dot in the middle, meaning that it's now outputting a hard value. Let's divide this by 500 and we get this very strange shape because each vertex is being moved by a unique amount based on its index and we can do all of this thanks to the fields. One final example, if we add a random value node, we can see that it outputs fields as opposed to a constant value that outputs a hard number. By now you can probably tell what would happen if we were to connect each of these two nodes to the offset. If I connect the constant value, it will offset every point by the exact same value value, essentially just moving the geometry. But if I connect the random value node, it offsets each point individually. And we can confirm it's in fact a field by looking at the connectors and the dashed line. That's all you need to know about sockets and connecting lines. I'm Dude Blender. happy blending.